Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates here on Racing America. In today's episode, we have 10 drivers that saw action over the weekend, including NASCAR Xfinity, late model racing at Madeira, a debut at Music City, a little dirt racing in Texas and California, and quarter midgets in Georgia. So let's get right to the results. Anthony Alfredo and Sheldon Creed were at Richmond Raceway for the NASCAR Xfinity Toyota Care 250. The three quarter mile short track is known to produce some of the best racing of the year. But before we get results, let's take a lap around Richmond with Anthony Alfredo in this week's Track Laps with Fast Pasta. Hey everybody, Anthony Alfredo here. We're at Richmond Raceway on iRacing. This is a great way for me to prepare for the upcoming race here, the NASCAR Xfinity Series. One of my favorite tracks actually, classic short track racing, but it's still pretty fast. However, there's a lot of tire fall off here. It wears your tires really quickly. But I'll show you how fun this place is to run. Real smooth getting into the throttle on this curved front straightaway. Then on the brakes down into turn one, you can actually carry a wide arc and hit a late apex, but you want to wrap that yellow line and be as low and straight off the bottom as possible off of turn two. And then turn three, you can actually drive into about straight and then wrap this yellow line really tight. There's a lot of grip on it and it helps the car turn all the way around the corner. Same thing in turn one, there's a couple different lines. You can carry that wide arc in and get to the line a little bit later so you're straighter off the bottom just like that or you can get to it early just like I did down in turn three right here but this is a really fun track gonna be pushing and shoving short track racing a couple bump and runs probably but a really exciting race and I'm definitely looking forward to it Wow, it only takes about 22 seconds to get around America's premier short track. Let's check in and see how the two fared. We start with Sheldon Creed, who qualified his number two Wheelan Engineering Richard Childress Chevrolet in the 13th position. The RCR team struggled with balance the entire weekend, resulting in a 22nd place finish. We caught up with Sheldon back in Charlotte on Sunday as he was working on a stroller and his micro sprint. Hey guys, um, just hanging out on the Sunday. Had a really tough day in Richmond yesterday, so um, coping with a little soon to be dad uh, duties, getting a stroller built and, and getting some micro parts organized. But um, yeah, overall, just kind of not good from the get-go, really struggled with the balance of the race car and fought really hard, um, race inside the top 10 a little bit there at the beginning of stage two. And then uh, once I would just fall off, uh, I'd fall off really fast and really bad and then um, lost track position and just never got it back and never really had the speed to get it back. So um, yeah, those are tough days and I've had a lot of those I feel like lately, but um, it's not for a lack of effort. We're trying really hard and, and putting a lot of effort towards it. And um, yeah, I think we're hopefully figuring it out and, and can find some more speed here soon. And uh, yeah, hopefully be, uh, be running where we need to come playoff time. Up next for the soon to be dad, NASCAR Xfinity at Martinsville Speedway on Friday night. Sheldon enters the event 12th in points. Anthony Alfredo qualified his number 23 Larry's Lemonade Chevrolet in 19th. The Hour Motorsports car was fast all day, especially on the long runs. We caught up with Anthony right after the race. Hey everyone, top 12 finish today at Richmond Raceway. I love this racetrack, I had a blast. We had a really fast Larry's Lemonade Chevrolet Camaro, great on the long run, which is mostly what we had all day today. Actually finished sixth in stage two, which was great to get some bonus points and just was one spot shy of a playoff point in stage one as well. But 
Came home 12th. I was hoping we'd have a top 10. We were so close to it. Just need a little bit more at the end. Uh, probably went the wrong way on that last adjustment. But really proud of my guys. Thankful for everyone at Hour Motorsports working so hard. This is great to get some momentum building back up. Ready to head to Martinsville for some more short track racing next week. Anthony currently sets 14th in points as he also heads to Martinsville and the Fame Paperclip on Friday night. You can catch all of the action live on FS1 starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll head out west to Madera Speedway, where we find Cassidy Hines in her first Pro Late Model Race of the Year, and Brody Moore and Casey Klein in Round 2 of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. So stay tuned for more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Ready to take your brand to the next level? At Victory Lane Design, we can help. If you are looking for a professional website, cutting edge logo, a hero card that separates you from the pack, or video production to keep you connected with your fans, then check out VictoryLaneDesign.com, where winning counts. Hi, my name is Cole Denton, and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Welcome back. We now head out to Madera Speedway, where three of the Race Face Drivers were in action. Cassidy Hines made her first start of the year in her number 88 Friends of Jacqueline Ford. Cassidy qualified 13th in the 23-car field, but did not get the finish that she was looking for coming home in 14th in the 80 lap feature. Here is what Cassidy had to say after the race. Hi everyone, I just raced my Lunker Daddy Ford Pro Late Model at Madera Speedway and we didn't really get the results we were looking for today, qualifying 13th and finishing 14th in the main, but I did gain a lot of experience and I hope to come back here and get better results in the end. I can't thank all my sponsors enough Frontier Restoration, Fort Worth Screen Printing, Total Health Solutions, Matco Tools, Commit to Fitness, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, Race Face Brand Development, the Cassidy Hines Racing Team, and Nate Clark Motorsports for all of their help. Cassidy also had a chance to get some practice in with her new super light model that she will be running at Colorado National Speedway this year. Up next for Cassidy, Pro Late Models at Kern County Raceway on April 23rd. Brody Moore was making his second start in the 5150 Junior Late Model Series and looking to return to Victory Lane. The Colorado driver qualified seventh in his number 78 Charlie Wilson prepared Chevrolet and brought home a second place finish. Let's get a quick post-race recap from the driver. Season opener comes home second in round number two, Brody Moore. A sizzling start for your team. How does it feel to run second tonight? It feels great, man. It was a great race, great way to back up our win after uh, round one. I love driving for Ivan Keneally. Huge prop to him. Uh, great race, but I couldn't do it without all my sponsors. California, Apartment Associ Association, Valley Insurance Plan, ARM, Multi Insurance Services, and the Premier Care of Amtris, North America. Spring Hill Suites by Marriott at Madeira. Race Face Advancement, Brendan Jack, and I couldn't do it without all of them. And a huge shout out to Wilson Motorsports for giving me one head of the car this week. Once you got clear of the battling, the 1K was about a second ahead of you. You weren't quite able to reel them in. What more did you need tonight? Uh, we were still a little tight uh, through the center, but uh, there's always next race, so really looking forward to it. Very strong start for these guys in the 78 from Colorado, Brody Moore. What a start to the season. One win and a second. Brody sets first in points heading into round three on April 30th. Casey Klein was also at Madera Speedway making his second start in the Junior Late Model Series in his number 88 Nate Clower Motorsports Ford. Casey was fast right out of the hauler, topping the charts in round three of practice, then putting up the second fastest time in qualifying. Casey gave us a recap right after the race. Hi, I'm Casey Klein. This weekend I was racing in the 5150 Junior Late Model Series in Madera, California at Madera Speedway. I ended up qualifying second and there was a redraw, six cars, and I ended up drawing six. So I ended up starting the race in six, 
and I got into an incident midway to the break, and I ended up having to go to the back, then I battled my way all the way up to six to, for the break, and then towards the end, with like 10 laps to go, we had a late caution, and I ended up being in fourth, so I battled with the three car to get to the inside, and then we started battling with five laps to go for the third position, and I ended up getting that third position, so I finished it. And I'd like to thank all my sponsors, Thamer Farms, Sporties, Steakhouse, Mountain View, Polaris, Klein's Auto Sale. And I'd like to thank Race Face Advancement and Nate Klein Motorsports for giving me this fast car for the weekend. Great run by the young 13-year-old Quincy Washington driver who will be in his new Prolate model at South Sound Speedway on April 9th. We're going to take another short commercial break, and when we return, We'll catch up with Jake Bowman and his Rackley War team at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. Jade Avedesian trying to outrun the weather in the Midwest. Don't touch that dial. Wow, I think I just staged myself. We'll be right back with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. What is the last time you shopped online and got rewarded just for doing that? What if you could earn cash back from most stores on the internet? Plus, Get sales, save up to 80% off. This doesn't only relate to stores like Walmart, Macy's and others, but also to travel, books, service providers, movies, and just about anything else you can buy online. Speed Zone Mall is your one-stop shopping mall where you'll get cash back, promo codes, and hot deals from over 2,500 online stores. Here's how it works. Go to speedzonemall.com and click on join now to register. It's completely free. Then search your browse through all our mall directories categories to find all the stores selling what you need. Once you find the store you want, click shop now and the store site will open up. It's that easy and you will earn cash back on your purchase automatically. In 24 to 48 hours, you will receive an email on your transaction and the amount of cash back you earned. Why wait when you can join Speed Zone Mall today? Hi, my name is Joey East and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Welcome back. Well, Jake Bowman was at Nashville Fairground Speedway in his number 25 Rackley War Pro Late model for the season opener. The track has been in operation for 118 years and celebrated with a 118 lap main event in the Pro Late models. Jake qualified third out of 35 cars that took the green flag. He ran in the top four for the entire race, bringing home an impressive fourth place finish. We caught up with Jake in the hauler right after the checkers and got his take on the race. Hey guys, Jake Bowman here. Uh, I just finished fourth out of 35 cars at Nashville Fairgrounds on Speedway. Um, uh, we definitely had the speed in the car in the beginning on the, and on the short runs. Just we need to work on the long runs. It's a brand new car, so we never had a chance to even have a race on it. So we don't we didn't know what to expect. Um, definitely looking uh, for more next race in two weeks. Uh, I can't wait. Um, I, I want to thank Rackley War for everything that they do. Um, PB Plumbing, Pacific Coast Propane, uh, Friends of Jacqueline. Um, and of course, my crew chief, Mark Reynolds, for making all the adjustments and making this car so fast. Thank you. Great way to start the season for the young 14-year-old Huntington Beach driver. Up next for Jake, back at Nashville on April 16th. Jade Avedesian flew from California to Chicago only to find out that the Illini 100 Extreme Midget Race had been canceled due to heavy rain at Farmer Speedway. The young California driver reboarded, flew back to California, and went to Lemoore Raceway for the Jet Bowl Classic in her micro sprint. Let's see what Jade had to say after her eventful weekend. Hey everybody, it's Jade. Just wrapped up the weekend in Lemoore, California, racing the micro sprint at the Jet Bowl Classic. Friday night, we were struggling early in the night, just couldn't get in the rhythm, and then ended up winning both of our heat races, which put us 13th in the feature in Outlaw Non-Wing, and ran it up to second, which locked us in for Saturday's night big show. And then Outlaw Wing started on the pole, led 18 laps, and then about 12 to go, got collected with the lap car, which ended our night. 
Saturday, Outlaw Nonwing was in the pole shuffle and finished second, which put us outside front row of the feature and was running second with about five to go, had a late race restart and ended up third. And then uh, Outlaw Winged track position was key, started 11th and finished eighth. So thank you guys all for the support and watching this video and we'll be back in the midget in two weeks at I-55. We're gonna be hearing a lot from this young lady throughout the year. Up next for Jade, Power Eye National Midget Series on April 15th at I-55 Raceway in Peebley, Missouri. It's now time for this week's Meet the Driver with Grant Thompson. Hi, I'm Grant Thompson. I'm 16 from Oba, Alabama. I've been racing for 10 years. I currently race in the Allen Trader Prolite Mono Series at Five Flags Speedway. This show me the Money Series at Montgomery Speedway. My biggest win, in my opinion, was probably the uh, 2020 Snowball Derby Truck Race. I, uh, I ended up winning it. It was a really big, uh, really big deal for me. Really big win uh, for Kerber Motorsports. Uh, my hobbies: I love collecting diecast cars. I like riding four wheelers, playing iRacing, racing, video games. Uh, funny story about myself is um, actually, you know, in a race car you drive it two feet, and uh, I'm 16 now. And on my permit test when I was 15, my driver's ed test. I drove it two feet and the guy got mad at me for driving with two feet and he told me to switch to one foot and it was a little bit of a struggle, but I ended up getting the hang of it. Uh, my future plans and goals for me would be to hopefully move on to super late model race within the next year or so. Uh, you know, win the snowball derby, win the big super late model races, and you know, later on get into NASCAR if I get the opportunity to. That young man has amazing talent both on and off the track. So if you're looking for someone to be a great brand ambassador, he's your guy. We're headed out for our last commercial break and when we come back, we'll catch up with Caden Honeycutt as he attempts to keep his dirt factory stock winning streak alive and quarter midget drivers Carter Whalen and Landon Cox at the USAC Super Regionals in Georgia. Stay tuned for more Race Face Driver updates right here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Hudson Bolger, and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Welcome back. Caden Honeycutt was dirt track racing in his factory stock, first at Heart of Texas Speedway on Friday, where he won his heat race from a seventh starting position, and then led every lap of the feature for his fifth win in a row. On to Saturday night at Kennendale Speedway. Different night, same results. But wait, there's more. Big O Speedway on Sunday. Could they make it seven in a row? Take it away, Caden. What's up, everybody? Caden Honeycutt here. We just got done here at Big O Speedway on a Sunday, and we took home the win. We won our heat race from six and won the feature from second. We had an unbelievable weekend this weekend. Uh, we won three straight races. We won Friday night at Waco, started, started eighth in the heat, won our feature on Friday. On Saturday, went to Canada Speedway Park, won our heat race and the feature, and same thing again tonight here at Big O. Uh, I just can't thank all my sponsors, uh, Camp Motorsports, Melvin Camp for the opportunity to drive this awesome race car, uh, Dad Bodies, Jack Jenkins, Jack Stereos, Urine Race Fuels, uh, Renee and Kenny Merritt Motorsports, I appreciate them a lot. My mom and dad, of course, uh, my girlfriend, uh, all of our crew that we've had over the past weekend, I appreciate you guys so much. And, uh, and it's just been an awesome weekend. Seven in a row, this car has won every race. Uh, so 100% batting average, I think that's pretty good. So um, car story, uh, April 9th, we're going to Greenville Pickens next weekend with the Otis Von Nelson uh, Chevrolet uh, number 12. So we're gonna get back asphalt racing and this car is gonna have uh, its good night's rest. Uh, be ready for uh, next two weeks. That's seven wins in a row. Up next for Caden, back to the Cars Tour at Greenville Pickens Speedway on Saturday. Caden currently sets second in points after the first two races. 
Now, Carter Whalen was at North Georgia QMA for the Dixie Shootout USAC Super Regional, where he competed in five different classes. Carter had a tough weekend when his car got upside down in the Heavy 160 class. Ouch. Glad he was only shaken up. Here's what Carter had to say about the weekend. Carter Whalen here from the NGQMA Dixie Shootout Wild Card Regional Race. All the cars were bad fast when we rolled out yesterday, but today we didn't have luck on our side for the A-Mains, the heavy Honda car. We got wrecked on the second lap with arguably one of the fastest cars here. The Heavy World Formula was a touch tight but fast. We ended up finishing mid-pack. The Heavy 160 car, I got in a violent wreck in it. In the other two cars, I called it quits because I got bruised and battered really bad in that Heavy 160 race. But we live to race another day. We'll get the cars fixed. Can't thank especially Danny Cox for all his support. We couldn't be here without him. Ultimate QM, Mark Tuggle RV, and Conquest Strategic Marketing. Oh, and I also won this in the raffle. So that was a thing. Up next for Carter, North Carolina QMA on Saturday. Landon Cox was also at North Georgia QMA for the USAC Super Regionals, competing in three different classes. Landon put all three cars in the A main, finishing 9th in Junior Honda, 10th in Junior Animal, and 5th in Junior 160. Up next for the 7-year-old Monroe, Georgia driver, North Carolina QMA on Saturday. Other race face drivers seeing action this weekend include Hudson Bulger, who will be at Chris Motorsports Park in his number 17 Can-Am Legend car on Saturday. Cole Denton attempts to keep his winning streak alive in his number 46 Mellow Yellow Bandolero at Chris Motorsports Park on Saturday. And Jesse Love will be back in the super late model with Wimmer Motorsports at Dells Raceway Park for the Icebreaker 100 on Sunday. Now Grant Thompson takes on a different role this week as a driver coach for Sarah Sullivan at Mobile International Speedway on Saturday. Well that's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers here on Racing America. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.